They say when you truly love someone, age doesn't matter. But is that really true? On today's case, Ms. O'Neill says that when she met the much younger Mr. Brown, she thought she'd found her forever man. Despite their 12-year age difference, she even felt comfortable quitting her job at his insistence because he told her it was a man's duty to provide for the household. Today, she says his immature ways have come into play and she's too old for these games. After mismanaging their finances, disappearing on her for days at a time, and cheating on her, Ms. O'Neill says the numbers just aren't adding up and she wants him out of the house for good. Will Ms. O'Neill have a change of heart after hearing his plea to stay in the house? Or is his number finally up? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of O'Neill versus Brown. Thank you. Ms. O'Neill and Mr. Brown. Ms. O'Neill, you are here in court today because you say you are ready to kick your boyfriend to the curb. You say Mr. Brown is a cheater, he is financially irresponsible, and he likes to disappear and not answer your calls. You say you want him out of the house, and you're ending this relationship. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brown, you say you want nothing more than to save your relationship. You want to spend the rest of your life with Ms. O'Neill. You admit to making some mistakes of the past, but say it doesn't warrant you being kicked out of the house. You are here today to get your relationship back on track. Yes, Your Honor. Let's see if we can do just that. I understand you all have been together for three and a half years. You do, in fact, live together, have children from previous relationships, but no children together. Why are we here, Ms. O'Neill? We are here because Mr. Brown is a liar. Period. He's been cheating on me, and this is something that I'm almost certain about. He's just... I'm, we're not on the same level, like, mentally, you know, with the age difference, and I just want him to go. I want it to be over. You're just done and I'm done. I'm just done, because I, I can't take any more lies. So, Mr. Brown, you heard what Ms. O'Neill had to say. What do you say, sir? Your Honor, I'm here to say my relationship. I really love Lamisha. It just... Since we moved together, it's just been crazy. She's been acting different. Well, I understand that you all been together for three and a half years. How long have you been living together, sir? Like a year. A year. So yeah. in this past year is where you say the relationship has changed. No, it, it changed. We moved together. When we, when we wasn't together, she was, you know what I'm saying, it was like, I come and see her, it was all good, but she was wanting me to come over. I, I felt like the controlling would start coming in. Once you started living together? Yes. Well, let's just go back to this, because, Ms. O'Neill, as I understand it, at the foundation of the problems is the financial strain that this relationship has been under. Absolutely, Judge. Why don't you start with that? The, the strain is, is that Mr. Mr. Brown insists that he works and I don't work. Like, I don't have a problem with working because I want to know what money is coming in and how much money is coming in. So Mr. Brown works and I don't work, but I don't ever see a check. I don't ever see a pay stub. I don't know how much money he's bringing in. But wait anything. a minute, why, why don't you work? I don't understand. Because you're 45 years old, correct? Yes, ma'am. And did you have a job before you met this man? Yes, ma'am. Don't you want to have control over your own finances? Absolutely. Absolutely. And me not working is just to cut down on the arguments and the confusion in our relationship. But I'm planning on going back to work, like, real soon. Like, it's a lot... It's a controlling with finances. Like, I'm not allowed to make my own money, so then I can't do what I want to do with my money. So, Mr. Brown, why would you want your girlfriend to quit her job? I could take care of her and the bills. Fair enough. But you rolling like that? What do you do? Yeah, Are you a I'm... doctor, lawyer, no, educator? At... What'd you do? No, I work, I work in a warehouse full-time. He then... told me to quit my job be... and that he would provide for me. He... Yeah, that was his request, Your... that he wants me to... He don't Your want Honor, me to work. work. She, she always called on my phone, text me, think I'm not at work. She got it's track the other way phone. around, Your Honor. But wait a minute, Mr. Brown. I'm, I'm gonna get back to the fact that you have children. Are they school-age children? Meaning under 18? I do have a temp job. So, you know. Okay, but so I just wanted to say, Mr. Brown, that requires money. And so you're trying to take care of a grown woman in your house, plus children and yourself, but you're not working in a job that's going to pay a significant amount of money. I was raised by my grandfather, so he always took care of my grandmother, so that's how I feel like when I get older, I can take care of my... 
I understand that because, you know, my grandfather, actually, my grandfather worked um, at a plant also, and he raised nine daughters with my grandmother, but they were also married for 60-some-odd years. That's a little bit different. But he also worked around the clock. He worked every shift there was, 8 to 4, 4 to 11, and the graveyard shift, as we used to call it. That's how you hold it down. So, Your Honor... So, you see what I'm saying? Is that the kind of work that you're doing? Yes, ma'am. No, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. O'Neill? So, Your Honor, the issue is now that we move to a place that's a rural area, right? Like, we're, we live three miles from town. Like, there's no Uber or anything that will come out. We had a vehicle. Okay. Mr. M- Mr. Brown came home one day without the vehicle. So I'm like, what happened to the car? He tells me that the car got repossessed. Your Honor, come to find out that the car is in another woman's name and the woman wanted her car back. Your Honor, she's crazy. See? She's crazy. If I would tell her the truth, she would be acting all wild. She would go try to jump on the lady. Wait a minute, what? Was there a different story? Wait, is there something worse than the truth than what she just said? That's the truth. That's and the he truth, couldn't tell know. me that because I I'm tell crazy. Because she's crazy. Like I said, I just want to have a way to get back and forth to work. Okay, I'm. I'm... My friend, along with the money that she co signed the car, her name. You were driving a car that was co signed by another woman that is not your it's woman. My ex. My ex. I was driving the car also, Your Honor. Oh, I would have had a problem with that. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I was driving the car also, and I was giving him money, because at the time, that was before we moved in together. I'm telling you, there's a juror right behind your shoulder that she, I think she was about to pray for you. I in think the red I need dress. Some I think she was about to pray for you. She straight up did like, like this. Like, boy, if you. Your Honor, that's not all. There's more? One day, he said he was going to work. So I went and I looked and see in the Google Maps, he's in a whole nother town that's on the all the way opposite direction of where he works at. One of my jurors' heads is about to explode right now. I, I'm looking at her. Her head is about to explode. He listening to Keith Sweat. And that's baby making music from where I came from. You had another woman sign for a car that now your new woman is driving and, and you... And paid car note. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Who was paying a car note? I paid a car note once or twice. I paid a car note. Had no idea once that t- the car twice, was in Your another Honor. woman's name once or until twice. he came home without the car and lied and said it was repoed. The insurance, everything was in her name. Your Honor, she took the car back because I was making payment because she didn't she want me to She took the work. car back because she found out he was with me. And then I asked him about it. He, uh, 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 uh. He don't know what to say. Wow. Okay, but Mr. Brown, you don't get to uh, 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 here. Please help me to understand what happened because, sir, this sounds like, and forgive me for saying this, the most trifling mess I have ever heard of in my life. Trust me. Trifling. You know what trifling means. That's trifling. Yes, for real. Honor. Yes, Your Honor. So what's this about, sir? How you gonna hold it down and take care of family when you can't even buy your own car? I could, Your Honor. It's just like every job I get, she always calling and texting me all the time. I, I can't work. And she always trying to talk to another female. Everywhere I go, she always say that I'm, I'm with someone. No, but I'm not talking about what she's saying. And you... Your Honor. I... Wait one second, yes, Miss O'Neill, because I just feel like people have to take responsibility for their own behavior. You're right, you're right. Mr. Brown, do you think that there's anything wrong with having another woman co-sign for the car that you and your new woman are driving around in? I that don't even sound kosher to me. The fact that I said it out of my mouth sounds crazy. Yes, you are. Your Honor, that's not all. There's like, more? He, there's more. There's so much more. So, one day he said he was going to work, right? Okay. I'm thinking, okay, my man about to go to work, get Your some Honor, money, I did bring go home, to work. and I'll be quiet, and pay the bills, right? So, I, we had exchanged passwords for, for um, emails and Facebook. Mm hmm. I said, just out of a whim, I was trusting him, I was believing him. So I went and I looked and see in the Google Maps, you know... The location you, services. The location services, the, the, all the Google account services. I find out he's in a whole nother town that's on the, oh, all the way opposite direction of where he works at. 
Then I go further looking because I need to know, like, what is really going on? One of my jurors' heads is about to explode right now. I, I'm looking at her. Her head is about to explode. So I look and I... So I look at the, the YouTube, right? You know, YouTube, you could listen to music and stuff. He listening to Keith Sweat and all of this you stuff. Listen to and he's about in this. a whole nother... I called him up on the phone, Your Honor. I said, where are you? I'm at work. You're lying. You're not at work. Keith Sweat. Key sweat. I was and, and that's baby making music from where I came from. I was thinking about her, Your Honor. Oh, boy, bye. Why you wasn't home with me if you was thinking about me? Because you always aggravate you me. You all in another town with a woman who the car, where the car live at. Oh. Why were you in another town, sir? <laughs> sir, I was gonna go check on my, my kids, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. He gonna and check so, on that woman. Uh, she gonna take that car from him. So yeah. let me, let me, let me get this straight. Miss O'Neill called you to ask you where you were. You lied to her, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me why. Is it just easier to lie? He's a keep, pathological keep liar. Truth. Everything that comes out of his mouth truth. is a lie. And the girl he was with before, I texted her on Facebook, and she told me he was a liar. His baby mother told me he was a liar. I didn't want to believe them, because I thought that he was... You know, I wanted to give him a Girl, chance. if somebody walk like a duck and quack like a duck, nine times out of ten, it's a damn duck. Duck. I just don't want to argue. Quack, quack. We had a job where we was traveling over the road doing merchandising. I go back to the room, I look underneath the bed, I find these pennies this big. Where they fitting? Who they fitting? Oh Who they fitting? They not fitting me. Where the panties come from, sir? The panties were left inside the laundry. <laughs> really? You gotta laugh, because it's That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's a ridiculous lie. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Gerana, it ain't the end of everything with Mr. Brown. There's more. There's more. Oh, father, I can't take one. There's You're more. So we had a job where we was traveling over the road doing merchandising, right? And um, we stayed in a the hotel. They put us up in a hotel, right? So one night, you know, on payday, we decided we were both working. We decided we were going to go to the movies. We come back from the movies. He wants to go somewhere. I said, where are you going? Um, I'm going to go look at a house. It's 10 o'clock at night, Your Honor. Your Honor, it was that morning. Who's showing the house morning, at 10 o'clock at night? So I went to the bar. The hotel had a bar across the, across the street. I met my boss at the bar. We had a couple of drinks. I go back to the room. I now, you know, I just... I, I don't know what made me look underneath the bed. I look <laughs> underneath the bed. I find these panties this big. Where they fitting? Who they fitting? Bomba. Who they fitting? They not fitting me? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Brown, where the panties came from? Your Honor, I went to the laundromat to wash clothes. <laughs> The panda was left inside the laundry, laundry room. <sighs> <laughs> that is a... You gotta laugh, because it's That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's a ridiculous lie. <laughs> like, you're the pan, Only up here... I didn't even know the panda was in there. Boy, bye. I didn't even know they was in there. Dude, really? You went to the laundromat To wash and... clothes, Your Honor. It's like the missing The panties was a size eight, Your Honor. I'm big. I'm a big woman. Ain't no way no eight fitting on me nowhere. Where the panties come from, sir? The, from the girl he was mat. cheating with me I at wasn't work cheating, with, Your Honor. who was I wasn't smiling cheating. and laughing and all of that. Every time she seen them, who be sneaking around the corner at work when we at work, sneaking around the corner, and I see them sneaking around together. Mm-hmm. So, Mr. Brown, Miss O'Neill is making out a pretty good case <laughs> that you are not trustworthy. At all. And I understand that there was a piece de resistance to know that he is not trustworthy. He was actually having an affair while you were in a relationship, right? Absolutely. A whole baby. Your Honor, she had oh. someone else, too. A whole baby. We were separated, Your Honor. You se separated? You had nine months plus two years to tell me about this baby that you ain't never tell me about. And Your Honor! To top it off, last night I'm in a nail shop. This is new news. Getting my nails done. He on the phone with the with the baby mama. He he he. Your Honor, I, I do you like my, my hair color? Your Honor. He, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't I don't have nothing to say to Mr. Brown right now. I have everything to say to you. What in the world do you want with this loser? Judge Starr, I believe that 
Mr. Brown has potential in his own way. Girl, he is and a grown whole man. Obviously, he's not a grown man. But he's not your grown whole man. This is a whole human got... man who is a liar, a cheater, and a user. My is that what you want? Have... Absolutely not. My oldest child is five years younger than Mr. Brown. And she don't like him for nothing in the world. Why do you think she don't like him for nothing in the world? I don't know. Probably because she know more about him than I do. Probably right. because she sees Honor, what is going on. I don't even know her dog like that. I oh, beg your pardon? Boy, I don't even know her dog he like that. He tried to talk to my daughter first. That's the part that didn't... Okay, that's it. I got to pack my stuff up. There's a meme of my friend Viola Davis packing her stuff up and closing the book. And there's a reason that she does that, because you know what? Nothing else that comes out of anybody's mouth is gonna make sense. Y'all can't make this make sense for me. It doesn't. No, it does not make sense. Your Honor, she's very controlling. Controlling? Yes, she are. No, you need to put some control in. Your Honor, I, I came here to get answers, and obviously I'm not gonna get any. Your answers are clear and in your face. The best thing that ever happened to you is you don't have a child by this man. Thank God. Because you can pack up your pictures and your plants, get a job, and leave this fool. Your Honor, that's the issue. I want him out. I don't know how to go about it. We have a lease that we signed Why together. Why would you sign a lease? Your Honor, I signed the lease because I couldn't afford the rent by myself at the time. So I signed the lease with him thinking that we would go half on the rent and half on the bills. But you Your Honor, do I the evidence. What? This lease was signed within the last month. So you knew all this stuff was going on. We moved to a cheaper place. We moved, because I, I came, I'm, at, I'm not from Georgia, where we live at. I'm from New York, and I came down here. You're from New York? Yes, Robert, ma she is from New York, where we are. Wow. Okay, now, Miss O'Neill, you and I are gonna have a conversation yes, right now. Look at me. Please do. What you're not gonna do is continue down this path. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Because, see, what happens is a lot of women, as we get older, we start to feel like we're lonely and we don't have options. I'm here to tell you you have options. Okay? But the first thing you're gonna have to do is start to stand in that unique space that God created for you and be an independent woman and stop fussing at somebody that's not hearing you because this is not the man for you. You don't let somebody talk you into quitting your job. Don't you want your own independence? I do, uh, Your Honor. I actually did have my own independence. Then you should have had your own independence and put on your big girl panties. When the car got repoed, I was unable to go to work because we live three miles from town. It's time to get out of there. Your Honor, every time we have a job, she want to work with me. When she work with you, think I'm trying to holler every female I'm talking to. Right. Here we your go. Honor. He lying right in your face. I'm going to tell Honor. you right she now. She be all in the guy's face. If a woman's trying to help oh, me, trying to do the job, bye. she'll come you over and see what we're talking about, you, you keep saying, boy, bye. I'm about to say bye to everybody because this is really something that I rarely, rarely see. This is the most codependent, abusive relationship that I've seen in a long time. Yes, ma'am. You know good and darn well you don't need to be with somebody that lies to you, cheats on you, uses you on a regular basis. And, Ms. Brown, I'm not sure who you are, but I know you're pathological right now. That I know for certain. My advice is that you get some help, because this is an illness. This is something that is a true illness. You open your mouth and a lie jump out. I don't know why. And you can't even... Explain to me why that happens. That's just something that's happening with you. And, sir, nobody's gonna wanna be with you. Even these baby mamas that you got, they not gonna wanna be with you. Cause at some point, they gonna look you in the face and say, little boy, bye. Ooh, boy. Ooh. Mm. Robert, that was the most trifling case I think we've ever done. I'm still in shock of the amount of lies that just came out of his mouth. That was truly, and another thing, and another thing, and another thing. Who lies like that? Obviously, he does. <laughs> <laughs>